It's time for answers to your medical questions. And get an inside look at the latest in healthcare, medical technology, and treatments. This is Rex on Call. I am totally without pain. No pain at all. None. Without pain. Today we're he we'll hear how knee, hip, and joint replacements are helping many live pain free. Good afternoon and welcome to Rex on Call live here on WRAL. I'm Kim Dean Holderness for Rex Healthcare. Joint discomfort is one of the most common physical complaints. Are you like many suffering from pain in knees, hips, or other joints, making even daily simple activities a challenge? Well, we're answering questions on joint health and joint replacements today. To phone us here at Rex on Call, just dial the number on your screen in Wake County, 744-3876, and outside of Wake County, toll free, 877-277-6252. Again, that's 744-3876, or toll free, 877-277-6252 for Rex on Call. If you're watching us live from your desk at work, well, we're streaming live at Rex on Call on WREL. You can email us your questions. Just go to WREL.com and search Rex on Call or send us a tweet. We're at Rex on Call. We'll be answering your questions live here, and they're going to be answered by a Rex healthcare expert that may be answered live on our program. All that expert today answering your questions on joint replacements is orthopedic surgeon Dr. Bradley Vaughn. He's a board certified surgeon with years of experience in total joint replacement. Now, while you're calling in with those questions, we want to introduce you to one of Dr. Vaughn's patients. Edward Henderson has been living with pain in his left knee. He had been living with pain for about a decade, and it got to the point that even walking became a chore. A chore. After careful consideration, he had a total knee replacement. The results? Just watch. Edward Henderson lives without pain. I am totally without pain. No pain at all. None. That's not something the 66-year-old could have said last year. A decade ago, he was diagnosed with some torn cartilage in his knee. His left knee was becoming sore and stiff, and that's bad news for a school teacher. I was starting to have problems um, staying on my feet all day. All of the classes, all of the activities. At age 65, his best option was a total knee replacement with orthopedic surgeon Dr. Bradley Vaughn. Dr. Vaughn says he's witnessed a boom in knee and hip replacement patients in their 50s and 60s, just like Edward Henderson. They know that the procedures work. Uh, they believe in technology. America really believes that technology is going to get them out of certain problems. And this is a group that's very well informed, and so they are unlikely to sort of stay with a chronic debilitating disease that they know can be corrected. According to Dr. Vaughn, the way surgeons are putting in knees and hips has changed in the last 10 years. A surgeon has options on exactly how a joint will go in. It depends on the patient. It depends on the surgeon's uh, comfort level with certain approaches. And basically, it's very specific to the patient. So there's, while a total hip or a total knee is very similar, there's a lot of variables that are encountered. Patient brings the most variables to the table. Dr. Vaughn creates more muscle sparing incisions, which helps patients get back on their feet sooner. For example, here at Rex, all of our patients, our standard approach to the care is mobilize them the day of surgery. It's not uncommon for younger people to leave the hospital in two days. Dr. Vaughn will not tell you it's easy. In fact, he says it's hard work. He recommends a physical therapy plan before and after the surgery. But it's worth it. Just ask Edward Henderson. Is he glad he had knee replacement? Yes, I am. And I can say that wholeheartedly. Joining us now is orthopedic surgeon Dr. Bradley Vaughn, and we have already been getting questions on Facebook, Twitter, and email, so we're going to get started with those questions right away. This one from Kayla on Facebook. How many weeks or months does it take to get over, or I guess to recover, from a total knee replacement? Well, thanks, Kim, for having me here. Uh, total knee replacement, typically, you're going to be in physical therapy for around six to eight weeks. Uh, that's basically three times a week in an outpatient setting. They're trying to get the flexion of the knee and the muscle strength again. Across the country, there have been studies about when do people return to average activities, all ages, all sexes, all comers in, es uh, in essence, and it's usually around three months back to activity, where that activity is golf, 
uh, back to the gym, uh, back to mall walking, whatever their avocation is. The back to work if you're sitting in an office setting? Office desks, depending on the age of the patient, oftentimes in two to three weeks. Oh, wow. Uh, on their feet at all times, some kind, sometimes can be up to three months, depending on if they're lifting. Okay, and this question came over um, email from Kathleen in Pinehurst. She had a compound fracture in her ankle from an auto accident, and she's having some limited mobility, some arthritis. It's become very painful, obviously. Now, um, what about total ankle replacement? Well, total ankle replacement is done far less commonly than knee or hip replacement, but when it's indicated, it can provide a successful result. The difference between the ankle and the hip and the knee are more ankle fusions are done. So in the case of trauma, where there's been perhaps some bone loss, uh, it's totally dependent on how much bone is there, and that has to be carefully assessed by the surgeon to see if they're a candidate for an ankle replacement versus a fusion. Okay, so it's a possibility. Now, after hip replacement, this question also came in online. With a titanium ball, can a patient have an MRI? Yes. Okay, can a patient have electromagnetic field therapy with back pain? Yes. Okay, and after hip replacement, will the patient have to use antibiotics prior to future procedures like dental exams? Uh, the dental prophylaxis, that's taking antibiotics before they go to the dentist, is back in effect, and that's basically lifetime now. So usually the dentist or else your treating physician will give you those antibiotics uh, with a simple phone call. Okay, uh, this question from Kathleen um, that was emailed to us, is there any exercise that may help ease or prevent knee pain while and after walking? Uh, well, the, the number one exercise is walking. That's the, that should be done. Uh, the exercises that help the knee are quadriceps exercise. The quadriceps, the large muscle on the front of the thigh, mm -hmm. and those are basically extending the knee or performing straight leg exercises with some resistance. Anything to bulk the muscle of the thigh up. And when they're walking, it's much easier for that sore knee to walk on a flat surface than a hilly or okay. an uneven surface. Okay. So this question from Sue that was emailed, she has a lot of health issues, including the fact that she needs to lose weight. She's about 260 pounds, and she needs a knee replacement. Should she be losing the weight before the surgery, or should she count on losing the weight after surgery? Well, that's a great question, uh, because weight is critical in knee disease in the United States. Uh, she should try to lose weight beforehand, and in those patients that have lost weight before they've had their knee surgery, they're the same patients that lose weight afterwards. So, but she sh so she should definitely try to do that before she absolutely okay. This question also emailed to us from PJ and Raleigh. If I have a knee replaced in one leg, will the post-surgical leg be the same length as the other? Yes, uh, knee replacement works within the ligaments that we were born with. So those ligaments are a certain length. They may be uh, stretched or contracted on one side, but they're balanced at the end. So the leg will be straighter, which many times people feel is longer, but in essence, it's the same as the. Uh, the normal opposite side. Okay. And are there exercises that, you know, we met Mr. Henderson in our piece that had postponed surgery and he'd done some exercises. Is there a way to use physical therapy to delay the need for surgery? Well, physical therapy always is helpful. Now, physical therapists will tell you that proper exercises, how to do it for your age and your activity level. Uh, cycling is great. Again, bench exercises to build muscle. But don't forget, walking is still a great exercise, and many of us could do more of that. Okay. Are there exercises that should be avoided after you have a knee or hip or even ankle replacement? Well, there's a lot of different variability, but most of us would ask our patients to try to avoid the impact activity after hip and knee replacement, basically jogging for jogging sakes. There's other ways of burning calories, swimming, cycling elliptical work at the gym. Okay, search for other ways. Okay, we're back after the break to answer more of your questions. Keep those calls coming in. Call in now in Wake County, 744-3876, and outside of Wake County, toll free, 877-277-6252. If you're watching us as we're streaming live on WRAL.com, email us your questions. It's easy. Go to WRAL.com, search Rex on Call. And if you find us on Twitter, you can send us a message there. We're at Rex on Call. And later, there's a special class at Rex that's aiming to prepare patients before a joint replacement surgery. Coming up, we'll tell you how this class is alleviating pre-surgery stress for patients. Welcome back. This is Rex on Call live on WRAL. Today we're answering your questions on joint health. If you have questions for our expert, 
Call in now. The number's on the bottom of your screen right there. In Wake County, call 744-3876. Outside of Wake County, toll free at 877-277-6252. And email us your questions at WREL.com. Just search Rex on Call. Now, knee and hip replacements at one time were performed on much older patients. There's been a boom in the number of baby boomers getting those joints replaced at a younger age. This is a group that has been a lot more active and is staying more active than the generation before. According to the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, in the four years of 2004 to 2008, the total number of knee replacements performed each year, total and partial, was up 30 percent. In that same time, there was a 61 percent boom in the surgeries among men and women ages 45 to 64, and those numbers are supposed to grow. Women are three times more likely to have knee replacements, uh, so that means, yes, that the differences between men and women goes all the way down to our knees. Yes, women right there are three times more likely to have knee replacement surgery, and that actually surprised me. But let's get to some of the questions. This is from Luella in Rocky Mount. She had knee replacement in January, and her left side is still numb. Is that normal after surgery for almost a year? Well, what she's saying, the left side of her incision, the incision that's used to put the knee in is usually where the crease of your pants is. And the outside of that incision, or the left side as she's referring to, stays numb for a long period of time because the nerve is transected by the incision. Normal gradually shrinks over the course of time. Okay, so normal. So this is from Barbara and Garner. She's had both of her knees replaced. How long before I need to have them replaced again? So what's the life expectancy? The life expectancy of, of knees, knees are around 20 years. And okay. depending on the age that the patient has their knees, there's a great likelihood that those knees will give them serviceable use for the rest of those patients' life. Now, the younger the patients get knee replacement, they may wear out in time. Okay, this question is from Al. What are the doctor's thoughts on partial knee replacement? Well, partial knee replacement is popular again. It's been popular. It's not new. It was mm -hmm. uh, started in the, in the 70s, came back again a few years ago. It's good for the selected patient with isolated arthritis, mainly on the inside of their knees, more commonly done in women than men. Mm -hmm. It is size dependent, age dependent, and the surgeon has to be comfortable with the selection of the patient careful discussion with the surgeon before you proceed with partial replacement. Okay, this question from Norman and Zebulon, um, the amount of pain involved with knee replacement? Well, it's a, it's a painful physical therapy process, but again, at Rex Hospital, many things are done with regional anesthesia, nerve blocks, uh, medication that's actually put in the knee to try to make that first 36 to 48 hours much more tolerable. Yeah. Okay, this question from Veronica. Um, she suffers from arthritis in her hip and trying to exercise, but obviously that's tough. What are some things that she can do to exercise with this pain? Well, again, with the hip, mainly the, the greatest amount of soreness is when they start exercising. Once they exercise, the hip warms up and they can get some exercise in. Cycling's okay, walking's okay. Okay, this question from Carrie in Willow Springs. Her pelvis is, quote, out of place and it's considered displaced. Um, now her knees are swollen. Wondering if she's able to put the pelvis back in place? Well, that would require assessment. That, that requires an x-ray of both her knees as well as her hips to see just exactly what out of place means and what amount of displacement she has. Okay, and this is a question from Kay in Raleigh. She has an arthritic knee and a baker cyst. Yes. Does that take care of the cyst? Yes, Baker's cyst is just another name of a swelling behind the knee that's associated with an arthritic knee. Arthritis creates fluid. Once the arthritis is eliminated, mainly by knee replacement in this situation, the cyst shrinks. Okay, and this question is from Donna from Oxford. She's 55 years old, has joint pain in knees and ankles. Not sure, um, wonder if it's arthritis in knees and are they both related? Well, it can be, again, this is where an assessment with your provider would be uh, useful. An x-ray is a very useful tool. It's a diagnostic tool and you can determine where the uh, arthritic problem is. Okay. The, uh, real quick, a question from Nancy. Um, her 17-year-old son, has, her muscles are starting to hurt around the knee. Um, is there an exam that should, for somebody so young that should be um, that should be taking place? Well, they, they can uh, see uh, uh, their, their provider again, but again, 17-year-old, depending on where they are, they should, in boys, they still have some growth, depends on their activity level. There are many different answers to that question. That's, that can easily be assessed at the office. Okay.
Great. Coming up, we'll be answering more of your questions on joint health. In Wake County, call us at 744-3876. Outside of Wake County, toll free, 877-277-6252. Email us your questions. Go to WREL.com and search Rex on Call. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Rex on Call, live here from the WREL studios. We're taking questions about joint health this afternoon. To reach us, call 744-3876 in Wake County. Outside of Wake County, call toll-free 877-277-6252. To email us your questions, go to WREL.com, search Rex on Call. Once you and do your doctor have decided that joint replacement is the right decision for you, there's a class at Rex that will answer all those pre-surgery questions. Now, it aims to make the process as stress-free as possible. And the folks at Rex Hospital have developed a class to, uh, to advise those joint replacement patients on everything from where to park on the day of the surgery to the typical type of rehabilitation exercises to expect after the surgery. Patients we spoke to said that class was really great in preparing them for what to expect, including the fact that you're going to make them stand up right after that, that same day after surgery, right? That's correct. Okay, a lot of people were shocked to hear that, but they learned that in the class. 75% of the patients at Rex are on their feet the day of surgery. That's amazing. Okay, well, let's get to these questions. We've got a stack of them. Cindy from Wake Forest, partial knee replacement um, in this April, and it still hurts and swollen. What should she do to strengthen her knee? Well, the main exercise there is, again, the quadricep strength. The swelling comes from weakness of that muscle. That muscle's been weak for years before the surgery. So redouble the efforts of strengthening the muscle. Regular follow-up the physician to make sure the x-rays are looking fine. Okay, this is Kelly uh, from Wendell. How long is recovery for bilateral total hip replacements if, for somebody who's under 40? Well, under 40 is key. The younger the age, the faster the recovery. Recovery, if they're both done at the same sitting, should be around six weeks. That's an operation that's not done terribly frequently. They're usually staged. But six weeks is the recovery following hip replacement. Okay, Constance from Rayford, osteoarthritis and back and knees. Suggestions for exercise and weight control at this age? Well, when the arthritis is in both, again, we go back to our regular walking program, flat surfaces. But we have uh, neglected to talk about aqua therapy. There's many things that patients can do in the water. Uh, water allays a lot of this force. They can easily exercise in it and would strongly encourage them to look into programs like that. Okay, this is from Virginia and Sanford. Both knees with scar tissue. Why does scar tissue not go away? Well, scar tissue, we all heal with scar tissue. Some of us heal with more. Uh, that's the biggest reason for physical therapy following knee replacement is getting the motion before that scar tissue would get too thick or too organized. But we all have to remember everyone heals with scar tissue. Some of us heal with more. Okay. This is from Darlene and Raleigh. Should both knees be done at the same time? What are the advantages and disadvantages of doing that? Both knees done at the same time is, is directly related to the patient. So that's going to be how healthy is that patient, how, what is that patient's BMI, that's their body weight referable to their, their height. Uh, again, is there any history of cardiac conditions? That's one that the surgeon and the patient has to, per, uh, to carefully select. Okay, and this is from Annette and Raleigh. If you're having problems with knees and therapy and other things aren't work, working, at that point, would you recommend replacement? Well, the, again, the, the correct assessments, you have to have x-ray evidence, clinical and radiographic evidence that arthritis is that problem before you do. But, you know, one of the, ra one of the ways you make a decision to proceed is when therapy and non-operative interventions are failing. Okay, this is from Patricia. She fell in late April and injured her shoulder, had reverse replacement, still having shoulder problems even with physical therapy. What's the next step for her? Well, a reverse total shoulder replacement is done for those individuals that may have a deficient rotator cuff. That's a cuff of muscle that allows you to move your shoulder. It's a, it's a big operation, it's a difficult operation. And it's also one that requires a lot of physical therapy. We talk about total knee replacement, shoulder surgery, same way. So again, have to go back, stay with the therapist, stay with the exercises. Okay, this is from John in Sanford. Had knee replacement, and when the knee is flexed and extended, he feels a clicking in the, in the same thing, with like an electrical shock. Is that normal? Well, the electrical shock is not normal, but the clicking, remember that the knee is made up of metal and plastic, and this is how almost 100% of the total knees are in the United States. So some noise will occur. Usually the stronger our quadriceps muscle get, again, front of the thigh muscle, the less the noise 
it feels. But the shock is a little different. I think he's talking about the way the numbness is. So he needs outside. to get that checked out. Yes. So Ruth in Raleigh, she had her knee replaced six or seven years ago, and her leg swells during the day, and the swelling goes down at night. Is it normal? Uh, I would ask Ruth how often she is walking. Is she sitting a lot during the course of the day? If she sits, the leg will swell. Regular walking is great at alleviating swelling in the legs. Okay, great. Now we're going to be right back with another round of questions to reach us here at Rexon. Call 744 3876 in Wake County. Outside of Wake County, call toll free 877 277 6252. Email us your questions. Go to WREL, search Rexon Call. We'll have another round of questions for orthopedic surgeon Dr. Bradley Vaughn coming up. Welcome back to Rex on Call. We're taking a final round of questions, and we have a lot to get through. So let's uh, go to Victoria on Rocky Mount. She's 80, her 83 year old husband has painful knees to the point where he hasn't walked, and he's been in bed for about a year. Is surgery even an option for him? May not be. He needs a pre-op physical assessment to see if he can even tolerate the surgery or get back on his feet. Okay, Anna from Durham. She had total knee replacement three years ago, and it doesn't seem to be working right. Does she need another surgery? Not necessarily. That's where she needs to have an assessment. An X-ray has to be obtained. A physical examination has to be obtained. It's important to know why they're not working correctly. Okay, and Tyrone and Raleigh had hip um, replacement. Uh, last month. How long will it take him to stop feeling constant pain? Well, the arthritis pain should go away almost before he leaves the hospital. If he's still having some muscular pain, remember we think, we, we, we indicated that it takes about six weeks before that hip starts to function. And a lot of times some folks will linger another six weeks before they completely lose their limp. Depends on how active Tyrone was before this was done. Okay, and this is Tanya. She's calling for her mother from Fuquay Verena. She had partial knee replacement um, for osteoarthritis in 2010. Now she has difficulty walking. Should she have a total knee replacement? Well, if a partial knee replacement is not functioning well, it can be converted to a total knee. That's one of its advantages. So. Yeah, and that's the next question, actually, the success rate of a partial knee replacement versus a total knee replacement. Well, total knee replacement basically eliminates all arthritis of the knee, and we had a questioner earlier ask who is a candidate for partials. This is why picking the patient for a partial is so critical. Okay, and is there a minimally, minimally invasive procedure, Tom Evans wants to know from Raleigh, um, to relieve pressure from stenosis, uh, from, arth I can't read what that says. From stenosis, uh, that's a, uh, that's a uh, from spinal stenosis, okay. which refers to the spine. Uh, typically, those procedures are not minimally invasive, but I'd have to refer him to the, our spine uh, surgeons. Okay, thank you so much for thank answering uh, all for of these questions. Me. And as always, you out there, consult your physician about any health concerns. And thank you so much for your insight, Dr. Vaughn. And thank you to those in our phone bank who are still taking calls this afternoon. Join us next time, December 19th. We're going to be talking about stroke prevention here at Rex on Call. You can email us your questions ahead of time at WREL.com. Search Rex on Call. So join us then. We'll be talking about those signs and symptoms that you should be looking out for. Email us ahead of time. Thank you so much for joining us here at Rex on Call. We'll see you next time.